Okay, we have here the integral from one to e minus one, ln x over one plus x dx. To get started with this one, I just wanna do the straightforward thing on this, I think, and use integration by parts. We'll do the di method over here to the right, just because we like to differentiate ln x, so we'll differentiate that, and I'll integrate the rest of it, which is gonna be one over one plus x. And now from here, when I differentiate ln x, we get one over x. Here we integrate this, we get ln one plus x. I'm gonna draw up absolute value. The reason is because if you look at our bounds, and e minus one, if e is like 2.718, then this number is gonna be something like around 1.718. Although it doesn't really matter exactly what it is, but the point is this stuff here is always gonna be positive and that's why I can drop the absolute value on it. So then next we're gonna have part of the solution here on the diagonals. So capturing that part, it's gonna be ln x times ln one plus x, and we're evaluating from one to e minus one. And then this stuff here is an integral, so let's just see if I can squeeze that in here. So this is gonna be the integral from one to e minus one of ln one plus x over x. So then we'll go ahead and evaluate it. First, plugging in e minus one, let's see what happens. We get natural log e minus one here. This one, the minus one and the plus one is gonna cancel out and we're just left with ln e. That's pretty nice because that's just a one. And then plugging in one, we get natural log of one times here, natural log of two, natural log of one zero, so this whole thing gets zeroed out. And so let's just clean it up a little bit. We're gonna have all that's left is ln e minus one and minus this integral over here. And now at this point, I think we're all set with our di table. Let's get rid of this junk. But what I wanna do on this is, let's do a very simple substitution on it to clean it up, just to clean things up. And I'll tell you why in a second. So we're gonna do, I'm gonna do u equal to minus x. And then if we take a derivative, we're gonna have dx minus du. Then when I do this, so first updating the bounds, if we plug e minus one in here, it's just gonna reverse it and make it one minus e, plug a one and we get negative one. And now the numerator is just gonna become natural log one minus u. This thing becomes minus u minus du. And then from here, we've got a lot of minus signs. Let's take and cancel this one with this one and just make that a plus or nothing. Now for this other minus sign, what happened here, if e minus one is 1.718, then this value is something like minus 1.718. But now minus one is greater than this. So what I like to do is get the greater number up top and we can use the minus sign to just flip it. But then at this point, the thing we can notice is this right here, this is a very similar to our definition for the dilogarithm. So you'll see comparing to our definition here, the integrand's the same, just a different variable. One key difference though is we've got zero here for the lower bound. And we also have a minus here, but a minus is gonna be easy to deal with. But we wanna get this set up where we've got a zero in the lower bound just like this. So what I can do on this is actually break it up into two integrals. For now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna have the upper bound be zero just because both these values are negative. So let's just see how that looks really quick. So now breaking up this way, I have a little quick graph here just to kind of give the intuition if you're not familiar with this. So. The area shaded here is this integral that we want. I create an integral from one minus e to zero, so like the whole area here. And then I just subtract it off as we changed it here, but then I just subtract it off with this piece right here to get back just this piece, which is this right here. So then one small trouble with what we have here is we've got zero in the upper bound in our definition, we've got zero in the lower bound. Well, that's really easy to fix. So in this case, let's just change the definition. I can use the minus sign to flip the bounds here. And, we, and so I can write this formula now as z to zero, ln one minus x, all the same stuff. And so now using this second definition, we can put this in terms of the dilogarithm with the input z. So it's gonna be just this and this. So the way we can write this whole thing is just natural log e minus one here plus dilogarithm one minus e. And then here minus di logarithm of minus one. And now with this, we're almost done, but let me just clean up the board and let's try to get a little simplification on this. Okay, now before we finish it off, I just wanna get a value for di logarithm of minus one. We'll use our series definition over here. If you just plug in minus one on the x value, you get the alternating signs. 
And then you'll notice the way we have it set up, like when n equals one, you're gonna have the minus one, then with the even terms, you're gonna get a positive sign, et cetera, like this. What you'll notice is this value is actually minus one times the eta function at two. And that's really similar to our Riemann's eta function at two, which is just the same exact thing, but all the signs are positive. So our Riemann's eta at two is just gonna be something like this. And now for this, this is just our series of one over n squared. We know this value to be pi squared over six. This is just the Basel problem. Now what we can do to quickly get back to the answer what we want is we can look, I'm just gonna call this, I'm just gonna give this thing a name like even. So all of our even terms of the Riemann zeta function is gonna be 1 4th plus 1 16th plus 1 36th, et cetera. But if I just factor 1 4th out of this thing, what happens is you get 1 plus 1 4th plus 1 9th plus 1 over 16. And what happened is we just reproduced Riemann zeta at 2. This thing is pi squared over six. But if all our even terms are one fourth of the full pi squared over six, then from that we know that the odd terms have to be three fourths pi squared over six, because if you add up all the even terms and odd terms, you should get back to just pi squared over six. So coming back to this thing that we want, what we have is we have all the even terms minus all the odd terms. And what we found is the even terms are gonna be one fourth pi squared over six, and the odd terms are three fourths pi squared over six. So I'll make a little space and finish it. So putting this together, we get minus one half pi squared over six, or just minus pi squared over 12. Take that and we'll plug it back in there. What's gonna happen is minus times minus here is plus. So for my final solution on this, we get natural log e minus one plus di logarithm one minus e plus pi squared over 12, and that's it. Okay, so I did notice this one's really similar to that one I did recently. I think it was like x over e to the x minus one. It's just because when you do a u substitution, you kind of switch back and forth between the ln x and the u. So they are pretty similar, but we did end up with a different solution. I think in the other one, we had like pi squared over six in it. So same kind of thing, but different answer. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.